So in this problem, we have two forces act on the hook. Determine the magnitude of the resultant force. So we have a hook connecting to, to it is two ropes. The first rope is being pulled with a magnitude of 200 Newton at a direction of 30 degree from the fixed X axis. And let's call this the force vector one and the second rope is being pulled with 500 Newton at a direction of 30 plus 40 at a direction of 70 degree from the fixed say X axis so let's call this F sub 2 before we solve this problem let us talk about vector addition all right so vector addition there we the, the reason why we do vector addition is to find resultant so to find the resultant for this example is f1 the vector force of F1 plus F2 and it does not matter from where you start so that will equal to F2 plus F1 one of the methods to do vector addition is the triangle rule where we use the head to tail fashion so so we so so let's add uh, these two vectors. All right. So let's start with f1. So f so first let's draw the fixed x coordinate. And we know the direction of the of f1 is 30 degree at a magnet and so the tail of the uh, of the force vector will start at the origin. And the magnitude is 200 Newton. So this is F1. And we will add to it F2. So what we will do is we will draw also a fixed X axis at the head of F1. And we will place the tail of F2 at the head of F1. And we knew that the uh, direction of f2 is 70 degree so it's almost like, like this so and it with a magnitude of 500 Newton and this is 70 degree so we can find the resultant force that where its tail begin at the initial point and head at the final point So here we draw the resultant force. So this is one of the ways to find uh, using the triangle rule uh, to add two vectors. All right. So let's start solving the problem. So here we will uh, have, so we have F1 and F2 and we have the fixed X axis and the two directions so we will find the resultant force by using the parallelogram law so what we did here is that we have created uh, two parallel vector lines to f1 and f2 so f1 is parallel to and equal to this line the uh, force vector is parallel to and equal to this line so it's parallel and equal to this line so this vector have the same direction as this line they are parallel and they have the same length so we draw two parallel vector lines these two lines will intersect at point b 
to form the two adjacent sides of the parallelogram. So we, we draw the diagonal of the parallelogram that extend to point B to form uh, the resultant force FR. All right. So what we did here is we used uh, a vector addition where we added the two vectors using the triangle rule. Uh, here we can utilize the geometric property of parallelogram to find angles. So if we know two, uh, two sides and the angle between them, that will help us find the resultant force using the cosine law. So from this shape, from this geometric shape, we can we can find uh, the uh, the side uh, sorry the angle between F two and F one uh, by th uh, using three ways. The first one we know uh, from parallelogram geometric properties that a, the opposite angles are the same. So if this is forty degree. That means this angle is also 40 degree. And we know uh, that the interior sum of, uh, uh, of the angles for the parallelogram is 360 degree. So 40 plus 40 is 80. So minus 80, that will give us uh, 280 and from parallelogram we know that this angle have the same length as this uh, sorry the same uh, the same angle as this one so 280 divided by 2 that will give you 140 degree so this angle is 140 degree 140 degree so now we have the angle between two sides. We can we can use the cosine law to find the resultant force. Another way that we can find the angle between these two sides, one of the uh, properties of parallelogram is two adjacent uh, angles, they add up to 180. So 180 minus the adjacent angle for this is is this angle so minus 40 so the answer will be 140 degree another way we can find the angle between the uh, between the two sides uh, when we added these two vectors it gave us that we have a 30 degree in here right so what is so to find this angle we use uh, something called uh, alternating angles. So we know the sum of the angles in here is 180. So 180 minus 70 will give you 110. So alternating angle, if this 110, then this will be also 110. So 110 plus 30 will give you 140. So here we redraw a half portion of the parallelogram to illustrate the triangle head to tail addition of the component so we so so you have the head and the tail and now let us label all the known and unknown force magnitudes and the angles on the sketch so uh, fr the, the, di the resultant force vector direction Theta. So the, this is the angle for the resultant force, and you call and and you can call this angle whatever you want. Uh, we found the angle between two sides, 140. Um, we have two unknown angles. You can call them whatever you want. I call this alpha and this one gamma. All right. Now, uh, what we want to do here is we want to convert 
uh, uh, angle alpha and gamma in terms of theta because theta is the angle of the resultant force the angle that we want to find so what we will do for alpha we know that the sum of 110 plus alpha plus theta is 180 right so alpha will equal to 180 degree minus 110 plus alpha all right so here we open the parentheses so it will be 180 degree minus 110 theta uh, 110 degree minus theta 180 minus 110 will give you 70 degree minus theta so now we can rewrite alpha in terms of theta which is 70 degree minus theta S uh, the same thing we will do for gamma so we know the sum of the interior angle the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degree to find gamma, it will, we will subtract it from 140 plus alpha. So now we open the parentheses. It will be 180 degree minus 140 degree minus alpha. 180 minus 140 is 40 degree minus alpha. Now we are interested in finding uh, gamma in terms of theta because theta is the angle that we want to find. So we replace alpha with 70 degree minus theta so now we open the parentheses 40 degree minus 70 degree plus alpha 40 minus 70 will give you minus 30 plus theta so now we will find the magnitude of the resultant force we will use the cosine law because we know two sides and the angle between them so this is the cosine law the capital C is the side that you want to find its magnitude or its length a and B are the two known sides and this and the small c is the angle between them so we replace the the, uh, uh, the known values and we will end up the resultant force to be 666 Newton all right, so now we want to find the direction theta of the resultant force. We use the, the law of science to find an unknown angle. In this case, it is best to turn the fractions upside down. So originally, uh, the sine law is A divided by sine A, B divided by sine B, and C divided by sine C. We can, but when we want to find angle, it is best to uh, turn the fraction upside down. All right, so you can you can choose A to be 500 or 200. It doesn't matter. So here I shows that A the represent the force vector magnitude 500 newton. The angle opposite to it is uh, gamma, so sine gamma uh, for. 200 newton the for, for force vector one the angle opposite to this side is uh, alpha so sine alpha the, our uh, resultant force which is 666 newton the angle opposite to it is 140 degree so sine 140 degree As we told, uh, as as we did before, uh, we re we will replace the gamma and the alpha with form with with a formula that have theta, because theta is the angle that we want to find. Now we can choose any of the two combination where we have three knowns and one unknown. All right. So uh, we we plugged into the calculator sine 140 degree divided by 666 and it gave us 0 0.00096 so now we will move 200 to the other side of the equation since since it was division it will go to the other side by multiplication all right so the answer is 0, 0 0.2 so now we can solve for 
uh, for alpha. Sorry, for theta. Okay, so what we will do is that we will take the inverse sine of 0.2. Make sure that um, your uh, calculator is set to degree mode, not radiant mode. So the answer for the inverse sine of 0.2 is 11.54. Now we can solve for theta. All right. And theta is... 58.46 thank you very much for watching i hope that you find this helpful